Question 2 from the 2019 National Physics SQA exam, Section 2. A glider is accelerated from rest by a cable attached to a winch. The winch is a, a drum which the cable is wrapped round. It turns round, draws the cable in and in turn draws the glider across here. It accelerates the glider. The graph shows the horizontal velocity, V subscript H, of the glider for the first 20 seconds of its motion. And there's the graph there. Part A, the glider is accelerated by a constant unbalanced force of 925 newtons. And part I says, show that the initial acceleration of the glider is 2.5 metres per second every second. So we have a velocity time graph, and the gradient of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. And you can see for the first part of that graph, we have a straight line. And a straight line tells us constant acceleration. It's sloping upwards, so for constant acceleration. Along the way here, we have constant velocity, which is no acceleration. So we can interpret the graph like that. The other thing to interpret from the graph is the scale of the graph. And I've blown up the part of the graph to show you here. And we can see at the time axis, we have got two boxes represents one second. You can check that. One, two, three, four, five, five seconds. And vertically in the velocity axis, we have just one box equal to one meters per second. One, two, three three, four, and five. So now we know of the scale of the graph, we can go ahead and do our calculations from the graph. Now, to work out the acceleration of a graph, it's good to know that the acceleration is really equal to the gradient of the graph, which we write as delta v, change in velocity, over the change in the time. That's the definition for acceleration. So we pick a point on the graph, or two points. So our first point would be here, Easy enough, 0, 0. And we'll go right to the top one here to 20, because that point there lies on the 20 mark there like that. So there's our two points, and we can find a change in time and a change in velocity from those two points. So for example, the change in the time, we go from 0 up to the point where we are actually measuring. There, straight down the way. So we can cause, we can see that the time's up there, that to the point. So we can say we go along the time and then straight up to the point which we're measuring. And that graph there shows us that that there is delta t. That's the change in time. And this vertical portion here is the change in the velocity. So all we have to do now is find the numbers for these. Now the change in time is 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 8 seconds. So delta t is equal to 8 seconds. What's delta V? Well, delta V is a change in velocity, and the velocity went from the 0 all the way up to the 20. So we can see the change in the velocity is equal to 20 metres per second. So there we have the change in velocity and the change in time. So we just need to go over to our equation and put that in then. Acceleration is equal to change in velocity, 20 metres per second, divided by the change in time, which is 8 seconds. So therefore we do that on our calculator and we get that the acceleration turned out to be 2.5 and remember the units, the units are meter per second every second. That tells us that every second in that graph the velocity of the glider is going to increase, the, the horizontal velocity of the glider is going to increase by 2.5 meters per second every second. Now, you could have done that with the other way of doing it. You could have said, well, I'm going to use this equation here, acceleration equals the final velocity, take away the initial velocity, and divide that by t. And we can just simply plug in the same numbers. Our final velocity in this case is going to be 20. That's up here, 20. Put a bracket in the top one, 20 meters per second. Take away the initial velocity, which is going to be 0. And we divide by the time that took to do that, which is the same as delta t is 8 seconds. So there's our units here, metres per second, outside the bracket, and seconds there. And that'll give us the same answer. So there's the two ways we can do that. I think the gradient method is much easier when we're dealing with graphs, because we can see it visually. There is delta, uh, there's delta t, and there's delta v. So acceleration is delta v over delta t, and when I use the word delta v, it means change in speed, or change in velocity. Delta t means change in time. So uh, three mar or two marks is gained by finding that acceleration is 2.5 metres per second every second.
part two of question 2a and it asks us to calculate the mass of the glider and we're told previous question that the glider is accelerated at a constant unbalanced force of 925 newtons and we've also worked out from the previous part of the question that the acceleration is 2.5 meters per second every second so we've got the acceleration we have the unbalanced force which is going to be equal to 925 newtons and all we have to do is find the mass which will be in kilograms and we know the famous equation for that then the famous equation is f unbalanced force is equal to the mass times the acceleration so do a bit of rearranging here we're after the in this case we're after the mass so the mass is on the right hand side so to get that on its own we must simply divide through by the acceleration so unbalanced force divided by the acceleration will give the mass on its own so plug in the numbers in the unbalanced force is 925 newtons and the acceleration we worked out to be 2.5 meters per second every second and if we do that in our calculator we get an answer of 370 kilograms and it's quite a simple one to do but it gains us those three marks final answer 370 kilograms question 2a continued part 3 at 2.0 seconds the cable pulls the glider with a force of 1200 newtons you can see that in the diagram part a says determine the size of the frictional forces acting on the glider at this time well we can draw a diagram of this make a dot to stand for the glider and therefore we can put in the forces so we have got a force of 1200 newtons pulling the glider forward and we have forces acting backwards which collectively are called the frictional forces due to the ground and due to the air and that is given the symbol small f now when we get to a situation like this we know that we can add the vectors together as long as one vector's tail sits against another vector's nose so we take the frictional force vector and take its tail and put it onto the nose of the 1200 newton vector the forward vector and the resultant vector is going to be this one here and we know the size of it because in the previous question it told you that the unbalanced force at two seconds was indeed 925 newtons so you can see we have a diagram here we can easily find the size or the magnitude of the frictional forces because just looking at the diagram we know that the frictional force f must equal 1200 newtons take away the 925 newtons and if we do that on our calculator we end up with 275 newtons so that's the value of the frictional force acting backwards on the glider now we could have easily made the frictional force uh, this direction here we could have said it's always acting backwards and remember the rule take the nose of one vector and nestle it into the tail we could have just moved the nose of the frictional force vector and nestled it in the tail of the 1200 newton vector and look the resulting vector is always the same so the rule is as long as you add the nose and the tail then you'll get your answer just by looking at the diagram now part b says suggests one design feature of the glider that reduces the frictional forces acting on it and that's quite simply make it more aerodynamic and that's the word we're looking for aerodynamic now we can actually explain that in the diagram because we know to make it more aerodynamic you're going to have uh, the wind which is going to come in and the wind is going to sweep over us nice and smoothly like that and that means that the glider is more aerodynamic and that means just making the nose of it slightly more nice and curved like that so as that the wind goes over it but now the picture already shows you it's kind of aerodynamic you wouldn't want to have a glider with a front face like that because then the wind would come in and slam back into it like that and slam back into it there and you can see the wind's all going to crush up there and that's going to increase your frictional forces so the answer to to part b is just make it more aerodynamic mm -hmm.